Okay, so hello and welcome back to another Python tutorial. In this one, we're going to be looking at searching algorithms and we're going to be doing this for the next two or three videos. They're going to be short videos, so I might make two tonight, for example. But anyway, searching algorithms are, well, first of all, the definition of an algorithm is a set of instructions to carry out a task. And the task for a searching algorithm, if you couldn't guess, was to search for something in a list. So let's say like here, for example, we have a list of values, so 64197328. And we want to find value three. Now, as a human, we can look through the list and say, well, there it is. But a computer has to actually check. So well, the thing with search algorithms is there are different ways to check. And then we'll, later on, we'll come on to sorting algorithms for like putting them in certain orders in different ways. And starting off with a simple one, which is a linear search, which it checks position zero in a list. If that's equal to the number we want, then we found it. Otherwise, it'll check the position two, then three, then four, then five, six. And the longer our thing is, the longer it's going to take to find the number, or the longer it can take. Though, obviously, if our number's in the first place, then it'll take the same time. Now, we're going to build this algorithm in Python so we can start off with a list of random numbers. And then as soon as we find the number we want, it'll say found, and it'll tell us how long it took us, the program, to find it. <clears throat> so... If you want to look up linear search, you can just search it. I mean, it's simple enough to grasp, you know, you just go through a list one at a time until you find the one you want. Now, this is a Python task that you can probably do on your own, or at least like do the parts on your own. I'll do it as well, but you know, you can check back if you want on the video, though I would recommend pausing to try and uh, work for yourself. So first of all, we are going to make a list. So you can have this list as either numbers to sort into well, th sorry, this isn't, a uh, this isn't a sorting algorithm, it's a searching. So we're not moving anything, we're just finding something. So this can be an array of strings, an array of numbers. So I'm going to go for strings. So well, actually, I'll have to go for numbers. So let's just put numbers, this can be our list, uh, numbers equals. And we'll put in like just random numbers like 6, 2, 8, 9, 1, 4, 3, 0. So it doesn't matter how many there is. Now keep in mind, if your same if the same number comes up twice and you try and search for that number, it's going to stop when it reaches the first one of that number. So if you want to use a linear search to find all the instances of a number, then you'd have to modify it a bit so that it doesn't stop when it finds one. It stops at the end, and then it tells you the place where all of the ones of that are. But we're going to do a simple one where we just find a number and tell us where it is, basically. So we've got the array numbers, which is our list to set, search through. And then we want to have um, an input so the person can ask to find the specific number. So we'll put like choice equals int input and we'll say like enter a number to find. Okay, that makes sense. And then we want to run a function which we're going to make. Now I'll leave it up to you to make this function. Obviously, I'm going to go through it anyway. So to make a function, def, and I'll just call it, well, we're doing linear search, so linear search. Now, um, I guess you can take in parameters for this. So you can, you can figure out the parameters. I, I won't tell you until you've come back to the video. So this, uh, this function, what it needs to do is it needs to loop through the list checking the first character is that equal to the choice if it is we found it and say found and stop if it isn't we check the next one and so on until the end so that's your goal to make this function do that okay then assuming that if you're still watching you don't know what you're doing or if you've come back and you finished it let's get into it so what we want to do is we want to pass in well, first of all, the uh, array, but we can actually just refer to the array anyway. We don't have to pass it in, really, uh, though we do have to pass in choice. So we'll put in choice. Now, um, also keep in mind, we don't have to name the parameter the same as the one we're passing in. So let's say um, at the bottom, we actually call linear search. We want to pass in choice here, though here we can just call it like... Um, we don't really want to call it number because that's called numbers. So yeah, let's just leave it as choice. Why not? Um, then inside of here, the first thing we want to do is we want to have a boolean, which we're going to start off as fo uh, false. So we're going to say like um, found equals false. And then we can set found to true when we get our number. Keep in mind, as, as I said in all the other tutorials, 
if you figured out a different way to do it, then sure. I mean, as long as it does the same job. For this simple one, there aren't many other ways of doing it that I can think of, or at least not any more efficient ways. I'm sure you can always think of a more inefficient way to do it, but <laughs> anyway. Um, then we want to start going through a list. Now, there's two ways to go through lists. You can do for loops or while loops. Now, in all my other videos, I've used for loops, so we like do for i in range. But this time we're gonna use a while loop, which kinda does the same thing, but it stops when the parameters go false. So we say while something is true, do this, and then as soon as it goes false, it stops. So that's a bit different. So we'll do while, and the reason we're doing this is so that when found equals true, once we found it, we don't have to search anymore. So we'll do while, um, we also should have a variable for where we are in the list. So we'll do, um, we'll do attempts, because this can also be the position of the, um, where we are in the list. So while um, attempts is less than, then we need to check the length of numbers so that um, basically this is whilst we're whilst we're not at the end of the list because obviously we want to stop it when we get to the end. So whilst we're not at the end of the list uh, and um, found and found is equal to false. Now uh, one thing I like to do when I have ands like this is to put all of the things you're comparing uh, into brackets so that's easier to read. So you're saying like, well, this bracket and this bracket do this. So yeah, so while we've still got things to search and we haven't found our item, we want to then say uh, if uh, numbers position, uh, sorry, attempts, well, number attempts. So if it if it is choice, right? So if the number we're checking is the choice that we're trying to find, then we want to say uh, found is now true, which will uh, stop the it'll stop the search, um, and then we can say like uh, we can say uh, print uh, I found your number, uh, and then we'll say after. Now, how many um, how many searches? So, if we put in attempts, we'll have to say attempts plus one because um, attempts on the first run will be zero, and obviously, um, it'll technically you could argue that it's zero attempts if they find it right away but it's checked once so we'll say we'll say attempts plus one because obviously remember you start counting from zero so we want to print like one for position zero and two for position one and so on uh so you, i found your number after and then i'll say a number uh attempts okay and then uh obviously if this is false we can say uh, attempts plus equals one and that should work. Should we try it? Uh, we should also have like an else at the end, like if this whole thing ends. Uh, so we could say uh, down here, if uh, found, well, I don't need the bracket there, if found is equal to false, so if it still hasn't found the number at the end, print uh, your number is not in the list okay now one thing to note is that there's technically different ways you can do this stuff like you could have put the the choice to enter inside the function really doesn't matter for something this simple but let's run it so we've got our list of numbers here so what do we want to try and find let's say we want to find one now let's say what we expected to say so we so we say we found your number one at position one two three four five it's position four but it's on the fifth attempt of checking so one I found your number after five attempts okay let's run it again I want to find number three I found it after seven attempts and let's try it with a number that's not in the list so I want to find the number 42 your number is not in the list so this this uh, algorithm searches the list and re tells us if our number's in it or not and if it is tells us where it is or like how many attempts it took to find it 
Now, the reason we use this algorithm in coding normally, I'll give you an example in terms of games because my channel's Unity based. So let's say I've got an inventory and I want to add an item to my inventory. I have to check which spaces are free. So I can linearly search through my inventory to find the first empty space. And as soon as it finds an empty space, it can say, oop, let's put our item in here. That's a good use of it. Uh, there are, well, limitless. The thing about search algorithms is you can use different ones. You can use, a, for example, you can use um, binary search to get through this to find an empty spot. But the problem is certain algorithms are better at certain things and linear search is better for inventories for scanning through an inventory. Um, if you're scanning through a list which has hundreds and thousands and you're trying to find a specific number, it's a lot easier to do um, binary search and I'll teach you binary search in the next video. Um, the last thing I'm going to do here is it's always nice of a program to not just use it once and then just be like, you know, um, close. So we'll, I'm going to quickly shift it around so we can uh, reuse it. So we start off here by just calling linear search. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the input choice into the function. I'm going to take out the parameter. So we start off by running linear search and then I'm going to say it's as simple as just typing in linear search run at the end so that when the function ends it just calls itself in. So let's say I want to find one, there it is. I want to find two, I want to find three, zero, 43, it's not in there, eight. There you go. So that's simply, we call the function once and then every time the function ends it calls itself again. So it's kind of stuck in an infinite loop of, you know, but it, it works. And obviously if we don't enter anything, errors. I will make a separate video at some point on uh, error handling, so like it doesn't just break if uh, someone doesn't enter anything for an input like that. Um, I guess you could also always have just default values, right? So you could do an all like zero, so if it equals null, if the input is nothing, then you know. But the problem with this is if I input nothing, it doesn't count it as blank null, it counts it as a blank space in a string, so like that, that's what it reads it as. And obviously if I enter blank space for an integer, it's not going to work, so. I will do a video on that at some point if you want. But anyway, I hope this was good enough for the linear search. It's quite simple, but it's always nice to know and think, let's make the computer do a scan of something. And then next uh, video, we'll go through the binary search, which works in a different way, and I'm going to save that for next video before I explain it. Um, and then after I've done that, I'll try and think of some of us like search algorithms we can make in Python, and then we'll move on to sorting algorithms. But anyway, yeah, I'll link... Uh, something about linear search in the description. Obviously you've got the code here. I mean, it's simple enough just to read off the screen. Um, I hope the video is good enough. Uh, we've got a Discord uh, server if you want to join. Links in the description. If you want to subscribe, it'd help a lot. And then like the videos that you want more of. Comment what you want help with or what kind of videos you want because I'm constantly wanting more ideas of tutorials to make so I can hopefully make a list of things to get through. Uh, yeah, so if you like the video, do that stuff. Thanks for watching and goodbye.